let's talk about LibreWolf. So you might have heard of this browser before, and that's just because a year or two ago, this browser was brand new and it was getting really popular. Everybody on YouTube was making a video about this browser, but I never ended up making a video on this just because it never really seemed that necessary. So first I should explain what LibreWolf is if you haven't heard of it before. And LibreWolf is basically a fork of Firefox, but just much more privacy focused. So compared to Firefox, it disables all of the Mozilla telemetry. It disables some annoying features like Pocket. And just a lot of the default settings are much more privacy respecting, like it uses DuckDuckGo instead of Google as a default search engine. They even enable some stricter privacy settings like they delete cookies and site data whenever LibreWolf is closed by default, and they even have uBlock Origin installed by default. That is all very good. But to be honest, this is not that much different than a hardened version of Firefox. Now, I recently did a video on hardened Firefox if you want to learn more about that, but hardened Firefox is basically just Firefox with a custom user.js file added. So there are lots of these custom configs of Firefox that you can import from various people, that enable a whole bunch of these privacy settings already. So you can just download one script and have it strip out all of the telemetry and enable all of the privacy options. Basically exactly the same as LibreWolf would. And that's what I've been using for a while now. And so whenever I saw LibreWolf, I didn't really see a big difference between hardened Firefox and LibreWolf. So why did it really need to be a new browser? And that's what I thought for a long time. But I recently revisited LibreWolf while I was doing research for a video. And there are just a few small changes that really make it a lot better in my opinion. So what am I talking about? Let's go to the settings page. And you may have noticed this new icon on the side here called LibreWolf. And we can click this. And this is actually going to bring up a lot of settings that you might want to toggle on and off about your LibreWolf installation. So a lot of these are going to be some stricter privacy features that you may or may not want. For example, maybe you don't want resist fingerprinting so this is a setting that can make it a little bit harder for advertisers to fingerprint you and identify you across the internet. If you want more detail on this subject, I will check out my video on hardened Firefox that covers this in more detail. But this setting does end up breaking a lot of websites online, so you may want to just disable it. And if you would like more information on all of these options, there is a question mark right here, which basically makes it really easy for new users to understand a lot of these settings. So if you don't know what letterboxing is, you can just click on this and it tells you that it applies margins around your windows. And this is to make it harder for advertising companies to track you by the resolution of your windows. But a lot of people probably don't want this checked because it is kind of annoying. Whenever you turn this on, it will look something like this, where you just have this border around your window. Most people probably don't want that, so it is easily toggleable here. And in vanilla Firefox, if you want to toggle these options on and off, you would have to manually do it inside your user.js file. And you have to get your hands dirty a little bit. It's not a huge deal to have to go in there, but just having this menu to make things a lot easier is a really nice touch. And you can turn on a lot of popular options here, like maybe you want to enable Firefox Sync. They have it turned off by default, but you can turn that on. That is something many people want. And if you want the absolute most privacy, you probably don't want it communicating to Mozilla servers. So that's why it's toggled off by default, but you can still turn it on if you want to. Because I am all for privacy on the internet, but if it breaks everything, then a lot of people just are not going to want to use it. There is a balance between privacy and convenience. And if your browser just breaks everything on the internet and just ends up causing a ton of headaches for you, then it's not really worth it for most people, including me. So I really like having these options to turn these on and off. You may want to turn on Google Safe Browsing. And this is a list of malicious websites that Firefox downloads from Google servers. And so if you're worried about, well, we can click on this question mark here. If you're worried about malware and phishing, you can consider enabling it. But you can even see why they make a lot of decisions in this browser. They have disabled it over censorship concerns. And that's just because if it is controlled by Google, they could maybe use it for malicious purposes. Maybe the site is not even malicious, it's just something they want to censor. So that's why they have it off by default, but you can definitely turn it back on. And not only do we have the options on this LibreWolf tab, but all over the web browser, they have added a lot of small explanations and links here. For example, maybe you want to open the previous windows and tabs, but by default, if you check this, it is not going to work. So you can click on this link, what if it does not work? and it will take you to the FAQ section of their website. 
and they'll say that it will not work unless you preserve your browsing history. So by default, LibreWolf deletes your history whenever you close up the browser. And so you read that and all you need to do is go to here and let's say we want to not clear history whenever LibreWolf closes. So that makes it a lot easier for new users, especially if you're just coming off something like, I don't know, maybe Google Chrome. And for the first time in your life, you want to care about user privacy a little bit more. Uh, somebody might recommend you LibreWolf and before it was probably just going to be way too overwhelming. You would install this and everything would break. But now everything has a pretty good explanation in the settings. For example, you might be wondering why every website is forced light mode. And that's because resist fingerprinting is enabled. So LibreWolf will force web content to display in a light theme. And I don't know why they have this message three times. That's probably something they need to fix. You can go to their GitLab and report this if you want to be a good person. But you can click through this and learn more and learn that they recommend that you should not change resist fingerprinting in any way. And you can even click through this and find out even more about everything. So that's what I really like about the new LibreWolf settings UI. They just explain everything very clearly. And on privacy and security, they also have these as well. More links to learn more if you'd like to basically learn why they have made these decisions and how they protect your privacy. And so I think this will help a lot of new users that are just starting to care about their privacy or people who have been wanting to get into hardened Firefox, but it just seems overwhelming to them. Because hardening Firefox with a user.js file like Arkenfox is a little bit daunting, and this makes things much easier. Now, of course, this will probably not be everything that you want to toggle on and off. There are probably some settings that you want to change in LibreWolf. So you can either do that with About Config. They even have a link down here to go to the About Config page, and you can manually search preferences. Or of course, you can do this from a text file. So it's going to be under .librewolf in your home directory by default, I believe. And you'll just want to create a file called librewolf.overrides.cfg. And so you can add anything here exactly the same as you would in a user.js file. I think the only difference is the syntax. So it's default pref instead of, I think, user underscore pref. But that's not a big difference. And so for example, if I want to toggle browser.compactmode.show, I can change that to true. And now we can go back to LibreWolf and we can see that compact mode is indeed back. We can change that, that is nice. And besides all of the helpful things that you can find in the settings, I would also highly recommend to check out the LibreWolf documentation because that is also very good. You can see a list of all the features if you want to know exactly everything that this is doing because I don't have time to do a complete comprehensive list of every single change that LibreWolf has. But their FAQ section is also very good. This answers a lot of people's maybe initial questions about LibreWolf. They can even tell you which extensions they recommend. Maybe you're wondering why the built-in password manager is disabled. All that is answered here. So definitely check this out if you want more information. So I think LibreWolf is a great choice for a web browser if you care about privacy, but we can't finish talking about LibreWolf without talking about the updates. So this is probably one of the biggest issues that a lot of people have with this browser. LibreWolf is a fork of Firefox. And so every time Firefox updates to a new version, every time they release a new version, then LibreWolf has to come in and manually check that all of their privacy features are still enabled, that Firefox didn't change anything big. And then they release their LibreWolf version after Firefox's. So LibreWolf has a small team, but the updates usually come only a few days after Firefox's. So usually Firefox releases a new version and then maybe one, two, three days later, LibreWolf will update theirs as well. But I can understand that some people might be worried about being behind in security updates. You don't want your browser to be too out of date if we're talking about security. That's just a mess waiting to happen. But for a small team, LibreWolf does do a good job at keeping it very up to date. And in my opinion, having it be behind a few days is not a huge deal. Like we can see here, uh, version 110 was released by Firefox on February 14th, 2023. And we can see the same version was released for the Windows version of LibreWolf on February 18. So that's a few days after. On macOS, it was February 17, so a little bit earlier. And on Linux, it was February 19. So it depends a little bit on which operating system you're using. But we can see some other ones like 109. Uh, we don't really have to care about these smaller version updates because I believe 
Only the major versions have security fixes. So let's see 109 that was released January 17. And so 109 here was released January 17, so the exact same day sometimes. And for Linux, it was released January 18, so a day later. And finally, let's see 108, December 13, December 14, so the next day. So most of the time, you don't really have to worry about your browser being that out of date. It's just going to be a day or two or three most of the time. So I think that some people make a bigger deal out of this than it really needs to be. But if that's something that really concerns you, if you don't want your browser to be even a day out of date, then I guess the best choice would just be to use hardened Firefox instead of LibreWolf. But I think it's not a huge sacrifice to make. LibreWolf is still going to be fine for most people. In some ways, it is going to be more up to date than a hardened version of Firefox. Because with hardened Firefox, once the browser updates, they have to manually release a new version of the user.js file because maybe Mozilla has changed some privacy settings and preferences since the last update. And so you would have to manually update your user.js file every time that Firefox releases a new version. It probably doesn't need to be done every time, but it does need to be done at least sometimes. And LibreWolf helps you out by kind of automatically doing all that work for you. So if Mozilla changes anything in their about config, if they flip any hidden preferences, then you don't really have to worry because LibreWolf will already tick them for you. I don't know, in case Mozilla adds some new telemetry or something, that will automatically be disabled in LibreWolf. So that's another thing to think about. That's really all I have to say about LibreWolf. It is just a good browser. It has a lot of sensible defaults out of the box. And everything that you may want to toggle on and off is pretty easily accessible through the settings. So give this a try if you're like me and you've been on the search for the perfect web browser. And finally, the most important thing, LibreWolf is just a cooler name than Firefox, let's just be honest. And that's all the reason you need to switch.